This is my electric bike. Been in 1,000 bike races. Never lost. So we chose an old cruiser to do this to because it's rugged and well built. This one weighs 34 and a half pounds and it can really take a beating. It's got good motorcycle tires on it. So these are all the parts that you need to build an electric bike. So we're gonna put a bike rack on it, which will need to house the battery because it's gigantic. You'll need a electric wheel kit and the battery. So the electric wheel kit isn't the most expensive part of the bike. You can get this for about 150 bucks. We went with a 48 volt thousand watt kit, which is the most powerful one you can get. And you can get less powerful ones for cheaper, but they aren't much cheaper. But the thing is the battery is gonna cost you a lot more if you go with the, with the high powered one versus the low powered one. So this battery was $300. So it's a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. And it is from these guys. It's on e-bike. I bought it on eBay and we'll see how it works. It arrived broken. So this, where you're supposed to plug in your electrics was already smashed out of it before I even took it out of the box. I, I don't know what their return policy is, but we just want to get this thing on the road. And I don't anticipate having to plug it in and unplug it. So we're just going to plug it in and leave it plugged. Uh, it comes with a couple of different wire adapters so you can plug it into things. And then over here on the wheel kit, you get throttle, throttle assembly. And these brake levers are wired they're wired up so that when you pull the brakes, it kills the motor. So it's kind of like a kill switch wired up to a brake lever. So if you are if you trust yourself enough to just roll off the throttle when you're going to use the brakes, then you don't need these. Um, this is your controller module. There's a pedal assist sensor that you can put on your crank if you want. Or this is a sensor, and then this is a disc with magnets that turns when you turn the pedals. Give me a giant bungee cord. And then this bag, so you can put the brains of this into this bag and it's all kind of previously connected so it should be pretty easy to just bolt onto the bike we got a front wheel kit you could also get a rear wheel kit we just figured it'd be less hassle to do the front wheel kit and then the battery is going to go on the luggage rack it actually has a key that you can use to lock it and unlock it click click and turn it off and on on the bottom of it there's a rail that we can bolt onto this and you can slide it on and then lock it in place with the key. And then if you're gonna leave the bike, you can unlock the battery and carry it with you. It is super heavy, so you probably won't wanna carry it with you, but it has a handle and it has that lock, which means you can lock it on the rack and then unlock it when you're done and ready to take it in and charge it. You'll see we've got a bunch of extra pluggy things, including an extra socket came with one of these kits. So this came actually with, with the, the wheel kit. So if I wanted to replace the broken part right here, this would do it. I just have to crack it open and I'd have to solder everything back together and hook this up without electrocuting myself. Oh, I didn't mention the rack. This was made by Wald, actually made in USA. I like their stuff. I used their basket on my other bike. And this was, I think, $18.99 with free shipping on, uh, on eBay. This wheel actually also came with a tire and an inner tube on it. Some kits come with that, some don't. Wheel weighs 17.6 pounds. Battery weighs about 11 pounds. So... You're looking at about a 30 pound weight gain on your bike when this is all done. So let's see how it goes together. We decided to put the cruiser tire on it and we found out that there was no rim strip. So you might want to check that if you buy one with the tire on it so you don't get a flat. The bike rack gets mounted to the frame on the existing bolt holes there. And then on the top, it hooks up where the back brake would go. I'm mounting the wheel to the forks. There's going to be one washer on the outside and one on the inside and put that little tab pointing downward. Okay, that'll work. That'll... Yep. So this came with the wheel separately from the battery. They're made by different manufacturers, so you should always be paranoid about this kind of stuff. So what we want to do is turn that on, and then we're going to check and just see, make sure that the voltage, that it actually has voltage, and that the voltage is correct. So. If I plug it in here, look at the voltmeter, it's negative. So when I've got red to red and black to black, it's negative. So that means they've reversed the polarity on the plug. So for some reason, this one, the red is wired to black and black is wired to red and the other one is the opposite. So we're gonna need to flip the polarity before we plug it into the motor kit. Otherwise we're gonna cook it. You can see when I've, when I've wired it up backwards, it's 54.9 volts. So I'm just gonna pull the leads actually on what this plugs into i'm gonna i'm gonna pop the wires out and switch them and then shove them back in all right so we don't we don't want to cut and splice a bunch of wires so the thing that holds this into this connector 
is this little bottom tab. So you can reach in there with the bent paper clip. Of course, make sure it's turned off so you don't get electrocuted. And then bend this little tab down here, up, and then pull it out. And then we're just gonna switch black to red and red to black. So there we go, black on the top, red on the bottom. Again, don't do this unless you're absolutely sure it's happening on your bike. I'm, on a lot of bikes, it's probably fine. The instructions even say, if the BMS burn out because of the positive and negative error, that is not a warranty. So on the bottom of the battery, it locks onto this sliding rail with a pin. So when, it, when it's locked on, it's locked on, and when it's not, it slides out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this rail and connect it to the luggage rack. We're gonna make a little sandwich. So we're gonna put a layer of this stuff on top and then cut it off and put a layer on the bottom and then have the slider on the top. Now the slider, the whole part needs to be on the back of the bike because it's gonna slide that way when you take your battery off. All right, so here it is. Is it unlocked right? Unlocked. This is kind of a mess to do and we're just gonna leave it on there and you can see you don't want it to bend too much. Probably the smart thing to do would put a block of wood on here and then bolt it to the block of wood so it's completely flat, but we're just gonna run with it this way. We've had to shave the heads down of the bolts in these troughs. I think they're built to take some kind of really skinny headed carriage bolt that they did not include. So go ahead and Charlie slide it on there, see what we get. Have to look under your seat. Wham! And then down here is a pin and you have a key and you can put the key in and then that drops the pin into this hole. See that pin there? Now we'll keep it from falling off or being stolen. The grips are held on by an Allen bolt on either side. On some of these you have to drill a hole in the handlebar to retain it, but on this kit you don't. So we're gonna put the throttle there. So we've opted to hang the bag from the side of the luggage rack and we're gonna put a little uh, protector to keep it from whacking into the wheel. And then we just have to route all of the wires into the bag through that hole in the back of the bag. So we're unplugging them one or two or three at a time, making sure the colors match and then plugging them all in. Another option would be, because it is a fairly small unit, you could actually use hose clamps to hose clamp it to the side of the battery and then just have it all be one chunky unit up high on the rack. And then you'd have to get a bag or something to put these in to protect them from the elements. So we're putting the brains here and the battery here and we'll tuck all the wires in he's zip tying them down right now make sure you leave enough slack so you can turn your wheel um, and then on the luggage rack we put a little bit of uh, a plate in here just to keep it out of the wheel because we don't want the wheel grinding into the brains of it there's a little bit of clearance but not much probably want to put a like a piece of plywood or you're thinking if you get a plastic cutting board from the dollar store and zip tie it on here that would be perfect and it would cost you a dollar should I zip tie it to here once Oh, you could, or put it, yeah, but probably put some around here. Shut up, bird. So, cable management here. There's no perfect way to do it. There's better and worse ways. We're trying to use cables that match. Shut up. We're trying to use cables that match the color of the bike. And then once we figure out how long the cables are going to be, we're going to tie them up real tight in. Shut up. Tie them up real tight in here. All right, make sure you keep the cables out of the wheels. That's job number one. Make sure you leave enough slack on the front end so that you can turn right. And also make sure you put some zip ties to hold it up against the fork so it doesn't get into your wheel there. So the final weight is, jeez, I hope this doesn't break this thing. Five. About 64 pounds, it's fluctuating. Not bad, not good, but not bad. All right, let's see how she goes, We're going up this hill. Mission. Whoa, burn out. <laughs> 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 oh, we need brakes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Never lost.